Hi everyone! Good day! I am Menard F. Miguel from Cabanatuan City Senior High School and I am your teacher presenter for Tele Turuan. Today, we'll focus on crustal deformation, which include the movement of plates and the formation of folds and faults. After the lesson, you are expected to be able to first, describe the theory of plate tectonics. And second, explain how plate tectonic processes lead to the formation of fold and faults. With that, let us proceed to our lesson proper. Our first topic for today is all about plate tectonics. Plate tectonics is the theory that Earth's outer shell is divided into several plates that glide over the mantle, the rocky inner layer above the core. The plates act like a hard and rigid shell compared to Earth's mantle. Plate tectonic theory is based on the model of Earth in which rigid lithosphere consisting of oceanic and continental crust about 100 km of underlying upper mantle and made up of a number of pieces known as plates. But how plate tectonics work? The driving force behind plate tectonics is the convection in the mantle. Hot material near the Earth's core rises and colder mantle rocks in. Lithosphere plates move over the hotter and weaker asthenosphere below. As plates move, they separate, mostly at mid-oceanic ridges while colliding in other areas. When plates collide, one plate generally drives beneath the other, although in some cases, the plates simply slide past one another. The convection drive plates tectonics through a combination of pushing and spreading apart at mid-ocean ridges and pulling and sinking downward at subduction zone. Let us have one part of plate tectonics, and that is a plate boundaries. Lithospheric plates move as coherent units relative to all other plates. Although the interior plates may experience some deformation, some major interaction among individual plates occur along at their boundaries. In fact, the first attempts to outline plate boundaries were made using locations of earthquakes. Plates are bounded by three distinct types of boundaries which are differentiated by the types of movement they exhibit. These are the types of plate boundaries. Divergent plate boundaries, convergent plate boundaries, and transform plate boundaries. Let's start with the first one. Divergent plate boundaries are known as constructive margins, where two plates move apart, resulting in a pwelling of material from the mantle to create new seafloor. Divergent plate boundaries are locations where plates are moving away from one another. This occurs above rising convection currents. The rising current pushes up on the bottom of the lithosphere, lifting it and flowing laterally beneath it. This lateral flow causes the plate material above to be dragged along in all the direction of the flow. At the crest of the uplift, the overlying plate is stretched thin, breaks, and pull apart. There are two types of divergent plate boundaries. These are oceanic to oceanic and continental to continental. Let us take a look at those two one by one. Let's start with oceanic to oceanic. Oceanic to oceanic forms elevated ridge with rib valley at the center, submarine volcanism, and shallow earthquakes. Examples? are Mid-Atlantic Ridge and East Pacific Rise. Second, Continental to Continental. Continental to Continental is a broad elevated region with major rift valley, abundant volcanism, and shallow earthquakes. Examples are East African Rift Valley and Red Sea. Second, we have Convergent Plate Boundaries. This is where two plates move together resulting in oceanic lithosphere being thrust beneath an overriding plate eventually to be absorbed or reabsorbed in the mantle. 
Convergence can also result to the collision of two continental plates to create a mountain system. As two plates slowly converge, the leading edge of one is bent downward, allowing it to slide beneath the other. There are three types of convergent plate boundaries. These are oceanic to continental, oceanic to oceanic, and continental to continental. Let us take a look at those three one by one. First, oceanic to continental. Dense oceanic plates slips beneath less dense continental plate. Trench forms on the subducting plate site an extensive volcanism on the overriding continental plate. Earthquake foci becoming deeper in the direction of subduction. An example of this is a Western South America. Second, oceanic to oceanic. Older, cooler, denser plate slips beneath less dense plate. Trench forms on subducting plate side an island's arc or island arc on overriding plate. Band of the earthquakes becoming deeper in the direction of subduction. Examples, Aleutians and Marianas. And lastly, we have continental to continental. Neither mass is subducted. Plate edges are compressed, folded, and uplifted, resulting in the formation of major mountain range. Examples, Himalayas and Alps. Third one, we have transform plate boundaries, and it is now called conservative margins, where two plates grind past each other without the production or destruction of the little spear. Little spear is neither created nor destroyed. Most offset oceanic ridge systems, while some cut through continental crust, characterized by shallow earthquakes. Examples, Mid-Ocean Ridge and San Andreas Fault. And there you have it. Please stay tuned for more discussion on our lesson about plate tectonics and plate boundaries. We'll be right back. Hi everyone and welcome back to Teleturuan. Let us continue with the movement of plates that leads to the formation of folds and faults. The topographic map illustrated below suggests that the Earth's surface have been deformed. This deformation is the result of forces that are strong enough to move ocean sediments to an elevation many thousands meters above the sea level. Geologists have discovered that this displacement of rock can be caused by tectonic plate movement and subduction, volcanic activity, and intrusive igneous activity. The formation of rock involves changes in the shape and or volume of these substances. Changes in the shape and volume occur when stress and strain causes rock to buckle and fracture or crumple into folds. And so, fold is also an important term in this discussion. A fold can be defined as a bend in rock that is response to compressional forces. Folds are most visible in rocks that contain layering. For plastic deformation of rocks to occur, a number of conditions must be met, including the first one, the rock material must have the ability to deform under pressure and heat. Second, the higher the temperature of the rock, the more plastic it becomes. Third, Pressure must not exceed the internal strength of the rock. If thus, fracturing occurs. A number of different folds have been recognized and classified by geologists. The simplest type of fold is called a monocline. This fold involves a slight bend in otherwise parallel layers of rocks. An anticline is a convex up fold in rock that resembles an arc-like structure with the rock beds or limbs dipping away from the center of the structure. And a syncline is a fold where the rock layers are wrapped downward. Both anticlines and synclines are the result of compressional stress. More complex fold can be developed in situations where lateral pressures become greater. The greater pressure results in anticlines and synclines that are inclined 
and asymmetrical. A recumbent fold develops if the center of the fold moves from being one vertical to horizontal position. The recumbent folds are commonly found in the core of the mountain ranges and indicate that compression and or shear forces were stronger in one direction. Extreme stress and pressure can sometimes cause the rocks to shear along a plane of weakness creating a fault. We call the combination of a fault and a fault in a rock as an overthrust fault. Fault can be defined or can be formed in rocks when the stresses overcome the internal strength of the rock resulting in a fracture. A fault can be defined as the displacement of once connected blocks of rock along a fault plane. This can occur in any direction with the blocks moving away from each other. Faults occur from both tensional and compressional forces. There are several kinds or types of faults. These faults are named according to the type of stress that acts on the rock and by the nature of the movement of the rock blocks either side of the fault plane. Normal fault occur when tensional forces act in opposite directions and cause in one slab of the rock to be displaced up and the other slab down. Reverse fault develop when compressional forces exist. Compression causes one block to be pushed up and over the other block. Third, agreement fault. It is produced when tensional stresses result in a subsidence of a block of a rock. On a large scale, these features are known as reef balance. Fourth, a horse fault is the development of two reverse faults, causing a block of rock to be pushed up. And the final major type of fault is the strike slip or transform fault. These faults are vertical in nature and produce where the stresses are exerted parallel to each other. A well-known example of this type of fault is the San Andreas Fault in California. That is all about our lesson. Thank you for listening. I hope you had a meaningful and fun learning experience with me. Again, this is Menard F. Miguel, a teacher from Cabanatuan City Senior High School. Till our next episode, goodbye!